Hi readers, it's Miss A again. I'm so excited to be back with you. Today we're going to read a book that's new to me called Wanda's Roses by Pat Bryson. We're gonna try and find the beauty in the world around us right now. Seems like an important thing to do. Okay, by looking carefully at the text, what genre, say it with me, genre, it's a fun word to say, what genre do you predict that this book is and why? Tell me. I'm listening. That's right. By looking at the cover, we can tell that it's fiction. It's made up because they are not real pictures, but I'm curious if it could be realistic fiction and could be something that could really happen in someone's life. Okay, here's our target for today. Read along with me carefully. Follow with your eyes. I can infer the author's message in Wanda's Roses. Nicely done. Who has background knowledge on what infer means? Hmm. Let's look at it together. Whoa, look at those feet. What can you infer about those feet? Well, I see the person on the left has some really stripy white spots and some bright red spots. The person on the right doesn't have any of those spots. I have background knowledge when that has happened to me before, like the person on the left, it's because I had sandals on and no sunscreen and I was outside in the sun all day. So based on the clues of what I'm seeing in front of me and my background knowledge, when I put those two things together, I can infer the person on the left forgot to put sunscreen on. Ugh. Okay, comics are such a fun way to practice inferring. If you look at this comic carefully and you read it top to bottom, left to right, just like you would any other book, what can you infer? Now would be a great time to pause the video and stop and talk to someone around you about what you infer and what you see. That's right, I see a worm who's just minding his own business. I can infer he's happy because I have seen people and I've felt myself singing and humming and walking along when I'm very happy. I notice next the worm crawls up the bird bath and I can tell the bird is just minding his own business. He is shocked to see the worm quickly jump into the bird bath. I can infer the bird is also shocked and scared. He's trying to hide. I see Garfield pop up and I can infer Garfield is so excited to see both the worm and the bird. The bird go after the worm and the cat go after the bird. I can infer the dog is then also excited and the dog goes after Garfield the cat. I can infer all that excitement and all those emotions by just carefully looking at all those picture clues that I'm seeing in the text. In the very end, I can infer that everyone gets out okay. Whew, good thing. Okay, readers, so we're gonna practice doing that as we read Wanda's Roses. I want you to think about your inferring and what you can tell is happening as we read the text together. Wanda's Roses. One morning in May on the way to school, Wanda noticed a bush growing in the empty corner lot at Fillmore and Hudson Streets. It must have been growing for a while because it was about two feet tall and Wanda was surprised she hadn't noticed it before. But there it was, bare and thorny and Wanda, who loved beautiful things, felt her heart beat faster. A rose bush! She said to herself, my very own rose bush. Now, the rose bush didn't really belong to Wanda, but since nobody seemed to own the lot or the heaps of junk that were piled there, she decided she would care for this bush and make it her own. All during school, she thought about her rose bush. During art, she drew pictures of what it would look like in bloom. During library, she borrowed books on arranging flowers. During science, she asked so many questions about how to take care of it that finally her teacher said she really must stop asking questions about roses and start thinking about electricity, which was the lesson for the day. What can you infer about Wanda so far, readers? 
that's right, me too, I can infer. She's so excited to take care of this bush because every single thing she does is all about rose bushes and how to care for them. Nice inference. After school, she rushed to the rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. Maybe it needs some more sun, thought Wanda. So she put down her school bag and began dragging some of the nearby trash out to the curb. Mrs. Turner, who was on her way to the store, stopped to help her with a broken chair. Cleaning up the neighborhood, Wanda? Mrs. Turner asked. That's a nice project for you. Oh, I'm not just cleaning, Wanda told her. I'm helping my rose bush to get more sun so it will bloom. Your rose bush? Mrs. Turner asked. Where's your rose bush? Over there, Wanda said, pointing proudly to the bare, thorny bush. Oh, Wanda, I'm not sure that's a rose bush, Miss Turner said gently. What can you infer about Mrs. Turner, readers? That's right, me too. I can infer that she's kind of doubting Wanda. Because when I've heard somebody say that to me before, oh, I'm not so sure. I think it's a polite way of saying, I respectfully disagree with you. Sure it is, said Wanda. I've seen rose bushes in books before. And this is why, what they look like before they bloom. You just wait in a few weeks, this lot will be full of roses. Well, said Mrs. Turner, shaking her head. Good luck with it, Wanda. And as she walked away, Mrs. Turner thought to herself, if that's a rose bush, then I'm the queen of England. Readers, why do you think Miss Turner said, if that's a rose bush, I'm the queen of England? I agree. I think that means she doubts Wanda. Is she the queen of England? Doesn't look like it. So does she think this is a rose bush? Doesn't sound like it. Authors sometimes use phrases like that called idioms to try and paint a picture in our head as readers. The next day after school, Wanda hurried to her rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. Maybe it needs more air, thought Wanda. So she put down her school bag and began taking more of the trash out to the curb. Once I get all this trash out of here, nothing will block the air from getting to my rose bush, Wanda thought. Mr. Claudel was on his way home from work. He saw Wanda trying to drag an old door and stopped to help. Cleaning up the neighborhood, are you, Wanda? He asked. Not just cleaning, Mr. Claudel, Wanda told him. I'm getting rid of this trash so my rosebush will get more air. A rosebush? Here? Mr. Claudel asked, and so Wanda showed him the rosebush. Readers, what does Mr. Claudel think? of Wanda's rose bush. I agree. I infer that he's also doubting and not thinking that it's a real rose bush. I could tell by the way the author used question marks. So Mr. Claudel is asking Wanda like a question. A rose bush? I have background knowledge. When people ask questions like that, that means they're doubting it or they don't understand. He definitely does not understand. I don't know much about gardening, Wanda. Mr. Claudel said, frowning, but I don't think that's a rose bush. It sure is, said Wanda, and in a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the sweetest smelling roses you ever saw. She thanked Mr. Claudel for his help and went off to drag away some more trash. Mr. Claudel shook his head. If that's a rose bush, he said to himself, then I'm the king of France. Hey, that sounds a lot like what Miss Turner said on the page before. Is he joking also? Every day after school that week and the next, Wanda worked in the empty lot. Mrs. Giomani, who lived in an apartment next door, gave Wanda trash bags for the old shoes, all the bottles, broken toys, and bits of glass that she was picking up. You've done a great job cleaning up this lot, Wanda, Mrs. Giomani told her. Oh, I'm not just cleaning, Wanda said. I have to get rid of all this trash so my rose bush will get enough sun and fresh air to bloom. But where's your rose bush? Miss Giomani asked. So Wanda showed her. Mrs. Giomani put her hand on Wanda's shoulder and spoke softly to her. Wanda, she said, 
Honey, this is not a rose bush. Oh, but it is, said Wanda. And in a few weeks, this lot will be filled with the, mo be the most beautiful roses you've ever seen. Well, that would be nice, said Miss Giamani. But I don't want you to be disappointed if this bush doesn't bloom. Don't worry, Mrs. Giamani, Wanda answered. I won't be disappointed. Mrs. Giamani sighed. That is not a rose bush and will never be one, she thought to herself. The next week, when the rose bush still wasn't blooming, Wanda talked to her school librarian. I need some books about getting roses to bloom, she told Miss Jones. Oh, do you have a rose bush, Wanda? Miss Jones asked. Yes, but it doesn't have flowers yet, and I know it has enough sun and fresh air. Does it have enough water? Miss Jones asked. <gasps> water, Wanda said. Of course, that will make it bloom. Wanda sure is trying to solve her problem here in getting this rose bush to grow. Do you think it's a good idea, readers? Why or why not? Hmm. That afternoon, she hurried to her rose bush. It was still bare and thorny. She looked at the dry ground and smiled. Don't worry, little bush, she said. I'll get you some water and then you'll be able to grow flowers. Wanda went to the butcher shop right across the street. Mr. Sanchez, would you please give me some water for my rose bush? Rose bush, is that what I see you taking care of and talking to every day over there? Are you sure that's a rose bush, Wanda? Mr. Sanchez said. Oh, yes, I'm sure, Wanda said, but it can't bloom because it needs water. Mr. Sanchez gave her water in a plastic bucket. I hope that really is a rose bush, Wanda, he said, looking at her doubtfully. You'll see, Wanda told him, in a few weeks, that whole lot will be full of roses. As Wanda carried the water to her rose bush, Mr. Sanchez muttered, in a few weeks, that thorn bush will just still be a thorn bush. Every day, Wanda ran to her rose bush after school, but every day it was still bare and thorny. She watered it and sang to it and checked its bare branches for roses. Mr. Claudel, on his way home from work, stopped to see if there were any roses yet. Mrs. Turner, on her way to the butcher shop, stopped to see if there were any roses yet. Mrs. Giamani, seeing Wanda in the lot, called down to her from her apartment to ask if there were any roses yet. When Wanda went to library at school, Miss Jones asked if there were any roses yet. And every day when Wanda went to the butcher shop for water, Mr. Sanchez asked if there were any roses yet. To each person, Wanda would answer the same thing. Just you wait. Pretty soon, this whole lot will be filled with roses. And then, one day in June, Wanda had an idea. Oh, I can infer it's summertime because I have background knowledge that June is summertime. So this is all taking place. Part of the setting is summertime. Mmm. That's when things like to bloom for sure. Looking at the bare thorny bush, she said, if my rose bush won't give me roses, I'll just have to give roses to my rose bush. And when she saw Mrs. Turner, Mr. Claudel, Mrs. Giamani, Miss Jones, and Mr. Sanchez, she gave each of them an invitation that said, Please come for tea and muffins in Wanda's Rose Garden Saturday morning at nine. Oh dear, said Mrs. Turner. Is she still expecting to get roses from that bush? Oh no, said Mr. Claudel. And she's worked so hard. Oh my, said Mrs. Giamani. She'll be so disappointed. Oh darn, said Mr. Sanchez. There must be something I can do. Oh good, said Miss Jones, who had only heard about the bush from Wanda and hadn't seen it for herself. And I'll bring the muffins. The night before the tea party, everyone was very busy. And the next morning at nine, everyone was surprised to see Wanda's rose bush covered in roses. Paper roses that Wanda had made herself and carefully tied to each bare thorny branch. But more surprisingly yet, everyone who came to the party had brought along a rose bush to plant near Wanda's, except Miss Jones, who had brought delicious blueberry muffins. After they had eaten their muffins and drank their tea, they all got busy planting rose bushes. Mr. Claudel and Mrs. Turner dug the holes. Mrs. Giamani held the bushes in place while Wanda and Miss Jones filled in all around the roots. 
and the soil, and Mr. Sanchez brought water from his shop and watered them all thoroughly. When the work was finished, Mr. Claudel said, Wanda, this is going to be a rose garden fit for a king. Or a queen, said Mrs. Turner. Wanda and the others smiled. And later that summer, the whole lot was filled with the biggest, most beautiful, sweetest smelling roses that anyone had ever seen, just as Wanda had always said it would be. Wow, readers. Did Wanda get the lot full of rose bushes like she'd been hoping? She sure did. It wasn't the way she expected, but she sure got it. So here's what I want you to think about. Now that you've read the book, do you still think the genre is the same that you said at the beginning? That's right. And I actually more specifically think it's not only fiction, but it's realistic fiction. Pause the video now and tell someone around you why you think it's realistic fiction. Great readers. So what can you infer from the text? There's a couple things we can work on here. We can work on inferring what the author taught us. We can also infer what characters think and what's happening with the different characters. So let's go back to our target that we started with. Our target we started with is I can infer the author's message in Wanda's Roses. Here's some ways that you could talk about that message. What do you think the author's message is? I can't wait for you to tell someone around you. Write it in your reader's notebook. Write it in a digital notebook. Maybe post it to Google Classroom. Post it to Seesaw. Wherever it makes sense to you. Maybe grab a piece of paper like Miss A did. Maybe grab a sticky note. Whatever you can find. Get creative with what you could use as a reader's notebook. That's right. I infer the author's message is don't give up and things will come true. I think this because I read how Wanda did not give up on her roses. She did not give up on her rose bush and she may have not gotten that garden the way she wanted, but it eventually came true. I have background knowledge that when people work really hard and are persistent and show grit and don't give up, that things really do happen and great things come to be. So I can infer the message of this text is don't give up. Things may not come to be the way that you expect, but they come to be one way or another. Do you see this picture up here? This picture in the top left corner shows how when we can merge our background knowledge in our head and our experience with the text clues that we read in the book, like we put the red from our background knowledge and the blue from the book together, they make purple. And that's what helps us to make our inference. So when you're making inferences, remember that trick, when I merge my background knowledge that I have and the text clues from the book, I can make an inference of things that the author maybe didn't say, but that the author wants us to learn. Just like that picture of those burnt toes and feet at the beginning. All right, now would be a great time to pause the video and go above and beyond. Here's an extra target for you. I want you to read this target carefully. Turn and talk to someone in your house about this thinking. Or do some writing in the writer's notebook that works for you. Last challenge of the day, if you're up for an even bigger challenge, I want you to work on inferring and explaining what the characters think. So use those text clues from the text, the background knowledge that you have, and write an inference for characters. It could be the characters from Wanda's Roses, or it could be characters from a text of your own that you are currently reading right now. Thanks for hanging out today, readers. We'll see you again soon. Bye.